you're racing with other guys that don't go the whole night without, you know, having to get up to pee. Right. It's right. Exactly. It's an equalizer. We make a lot of noises when we sit down. Ah. Oh. So. The target audience for Just For Men. <laughs> Hair dye. <laughs> Good morning, guys. <clears throat> it is late March here in Indiana. And no, wait, no. It's early April now. And it is KRA number one. And it is freezing cold. Um, quite literally freezing cold. It is 32 degrees, 8 a.m. on Sunday, race day. Um, we're gonna get practicing here in an hour, so by that point, it'll probably be 34 degrees. So um, it's, gonna be, uh, it's gonna be an interesting morning. But it warms up to be a, a pretty nice day today. You said I'd fly away, but my walls have kept me down. Now I'm lost and I'm afraid, and I'm close to hit the ground. You said I'd fly away. You said I'd fly anyway. But I keep on flying. Under here, we got the two carts about to about to pull off that cover and start working on Dad's cart. Um, real quick backstory: uh, Ben was planning on coming today. He was going to bring an axle for Dad, uh, a medium axle that it would give more grip than his hard axle that he's got in currently. But unfortunately, Regan, who is who is Ben's wife, is very sick, and uh, so Regan, I hope you feel better by the time you see this. I, I'm sure you will, but. Dad is going there to pick up the axle, and I'm going to, the plan is for me to go ahead and take it out, to get everything ready for when he gets back. Problem is, all our tools were in the truck. And so, I have zero tools, so I'm gonna have to go and bum some uh, from some people, and start taking out his axle, making some changes. Of, basically, there's a lot of changes I gotta make here real quick. So, I'm gonna go try to scrounge up some tools, and get dad's cart prep for when he gets back. So stick around guys, it's gonna be a fun day. Courtesy of Tony, got the tools that I need. So starting to take off dad's axle here. So I'm gonna take out the axle, pull out these pills. So to do that, I gotta take off the kingpin nut. And well, I'm, I need to change his gear, but those are with him too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the changes, axle gear he's got a new chain uh and then the front changing the front pills to add more caster into the cart um so that's what i'm working on and hopefully i can time it where when he gets back we can just get that axle in and uh you know no impact to to his practice so that's the goal let's see so i got dad's cart all ready and what i've done is axle everything's loose knocked it through to the point where now I can chase it and it just means I'm going to take the new axle put it here and use a, a mallet just push it through all the way and that way I don't have to take off all the the bearing cassettes and stuff up here everything's loose ready to go for the different pills so now just waiting on the old man to get back and we'll get everything thrown in and and hopefully it's all done in time for him to go off to practice. Well, we did it. We got him out there, got his practice in. So mission successful. And uh, we just had had someone come up and actually a few people this week had come up and just say, you know, watch the vlog. I can't say it enough, like genuinely, that is just so awesome. Thank you guys. Like, we're just two dudes. Well, today we're just a family that loves Loves karting, 
and holds up a GoPro and says things into it. But it's awesome that you guys watch it. Tell us, you know, your feedback. It's just awesome. Thank you guys very much. Woo! Here we are on a crisp, cool spring morning. It's actually really cold and it feels like winter, but spring is on the horizon. The go-kart track is open. And yesterday, after the first practice of the year, where it went terribly, went to bed, woke up at 2 a.m. with acid indigestion, had to make a cold 26 degree run to the truck to grab a roll aids. And when I got back in, laid down, I thought, what do I talk about on my morning walk tomorrow? Next thing you knew, I was waking up, time to get ready to go racing. So all I can assume is I had sweet dreams and we are here at the sweet dream of go-kart tracks, Newcastle Motorsports Park. The Morning Walk with Dad. And it's been an adventurous day, but you know what? It almost doesn't matter. We uh, had a conflict. We're supposed to be heading down a couple days ago for spring break. Last week's race got canceled, so uh, Casey and Ben and I decided we'd stay up here and go racing, head down to actually Alabama after this race. And uh, I don't think anybody regrets the decision, though as many times as I've spun this morning, as cold as it's been, as big a challenge as the track has become, it's race season. We're glad to be back. Uh, I qualified fourth. I'm happy with fourth. Okay, I'm happy with it. There's 24 uh, people that took times out there. What I'm not happy about is being eight tenths off first place. Uh, the, the first three guys are eight to seven tenths faster than me. And so I don't love that. Um, but I think the track, as it's warming up, um, the track's coming more and more to me. Hopefully that's not, not just the optimist in me uh, getting the best of me, but um, I'm not gonna make any changes as of now other than tire pressure. And um, that's subject to change. If I get some other information from from people racing before me because my race isn't for a while so but right now no changes other than tire pressure and we're going to see what we got all right qualifying's over uh i have no idea where i finished uh they they put uh super masters and super heavy in the same qualifying run and there's 30 carts total and i'm mid pack as usual but i think there's 17 heavy and 13 super masters so we'll see i'm gonna have to reassess my goals this year last year i wanted a top 10 in masters never got there and with only 13 i think i i will have a chance at some point this year to get a top 10 nothing certain today especially as little confidence as i have and one of the things i've noticed is i lost my courage somewhere uh and just pushing the boundaries when i'm not comfortable in the cart and it's sticking is not something where I'm strong and it's uh, uh, something that I got to work on because it's um, you know I'm just too tentative and so we'll see what we can do about that going forward I got guess I'll start in the race here and see what we can do dad you're starting eight in your first ever super old guy class how does that make you feel super old, super old. you know I I think uh, I think it's super band, awesome, so, Casey. I've felt super old for a while now, so I think I'm ready. Now you're, yeah. Now you're with other guys that feel that way, right? Yeah. You go with other, you're racing with other guys that don't go the whole night without you know having to get up to pee. Right. It's right. Exactly. It's an equalizer. We make a lot of noises when we sit down. Ah. Uh, so. The target audience for just for men, <laughs> hair dye. <laughs> All right, heading down the straightaway here, getting ready to start. Uh, KRA number one in the 2023 season at Newcastle Motorsports Park. I have moved up into the Super Masters class and uh, really like the guys that are racing this group. Uh, really still hard charging bunch. Uh, a good group of guys as well. And um, it was cold. I mean, um, I think right now we're probably looking at 45, 46 degrees, and 
Uh, Mark Sirk wasn't scared. Uh, he wasn't on the eggshells that I was, and he went flying through there. Pat got a better start than me, and my qualifying effort was really poor. Um, just one of those things where, you know, I have no doubt it was mostly driver, but it was, um, the cart just felt twitchy. And even after the tires would warm up, that was the biggest problem for me. I just thought it was tires, right? I just thought we were not getting any grip. But even when the tires would come in, um, it didn't seem like any, uh, two, any corner handled the same on, uh, two laps right uh, one time I'd be fine and start to get a little bit of confidence and then it just feel like I'd almost lose it as the back end came around and I know it's probably driver input uh, given the setup we were running but it wasn't a good one for me I'm able to get around Pat tip of the hat to Pat he uh, runs down there with adrenaline fix I don't know him real well but super nice guy seems to be um, coming along really well you know just uh one of those guys that has stuck with it and is starting to see the rewards. He's just gotten a lot faster as time has passed. and uh, Glad to see that for him. And there's Scott Monson, who is, uh, uh, was able to make uh, mincemeat out of me heading down to the turn five, and, and he just pulls away. Um, I had been holding him up. He's a very courteous driver. He's, he's a good racer, but uh, I think he gave me plenty of time and probably cost himself a couple positions waiting on the chance to get around me. Um, Scott's pulled away by now. I think you can see him up there too in front. And finally, I, I, you know, this is one of those things where I felt like I was uh, kind of gaining on the cart and the setup. Uh, had been pulling in on Mark for a couple laps, and I think my lap times had approached those up in front of me in the next two or three positions as well. Um, and I, I'm looking here, I'm thinking maybe I can get him, uh, decide not to. But by this time in the race, I, I was getting that kind of racy feeling that I hadn't had all weekend. And I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get by Mark here because you can see some of those other carts up there and I'm thinking maybe at this point if I can get by Mark I can make something happen uh, but I think I ran into rev limiter there and pulled back in and um, was looking for the next opportunity which is going to come up here at the scoreboard hairpin and um, get a good run on him here and uh, heading into the scoreboard, he gives me room and very courteous, and I just flat out blow it. And you can see those other carts up there. We were, you know, within striking distance, and, and that's all she wrote. Got off track there, ended up finishing last um, because of that mistake. And, you know, it was disappointing in a couple ways, disappointing to make that mistake when I had a chance to move up and, I don't know, finished it, no worse than ninth, but maybe even a little bit higher. And uh, instead, I brought it home last, but just really disappointing with the way the whole weekend went. Uh, cold weekend, had high expectations and hopes to run with these new, uh, this new class. It just did not work out, so we'll go back and get them next time. Okay, guys, there are changes being made. Just watched uh, another another 206 race, the Masters, and uh, times are getting a lot closer to what normal normal times are. It means the track's gripping up, so dropping a, a uh, tooth on my on my gear up here. I'm going to change my bar um, because if there's more grip, I've gripped this card up as much as I can, so I'm going to need to peel some of it out. So I'm going to go with a stiffer bar to free up the rear. But a stiffer bar up front will add front bite, so to counteract that, I'm going more narrow. Uh, I've been running max width, so um, those are the changes. I hope I don't regret it. If I do, we're going to blame Ben because I just talked to him on the phone, and uh, he, uh, he kind of was a catalyst for me thinking of this, and I... Truthfully, right now, I think it's the right call, but if it goes wrong, we're blaming Ben. So I had said in my qualifying debrief thing that I qualified fourth, 
That's where a race monitor showed me, but actually you can see 527 up there. Caden qualified fourth, so I'm starting fifth here behind Riley next to Desi. Get off to a, a clean start, and it had warmed up by this point. It was like mid 50, so halfway decent. Um, and right here, I just this is on me. I I had I shoved Caden. I kind of hooked his bumper there. Um, that was over ambitious to say the least. So I apologize to Caden in person afterwards, and I apologize again, Caden, if you're watching this. That was that was definitely on me. Um, so I stayed in fourth there and looking to hopefully reel in that the top three there. Problem is the track was back to closer to normal, and I still had the medium axle in, and tall, lanky Casey doesn't work great with a medium axle. Like, I came out of this corner terribly. So right here, you're going to see these guys were, like, oh, I'm done dealing with that. And Josh and Desi push around me. So now I moved back to sixth. And just, like, the cart was really good in certain areas, but hairpins, especially the 70 down at the far end of the track, was a major weak point for me. And, um just paid a penalty for it all race so right here I'm going to kind of demonstrate it so right that was 70 just came out of it you saw how much they pull away from me here so the rest of the lap I have to try to claw that back so that's a that's a pretty decent margin there um, so going here through one two and three I were probably some of my better sections of track so yeah I closed up the gap quite a bit there and then down here, uh, turn five was pretty good for my cart as well. And so I think I'm able to make up some more ground. Yeah, close up the gap pretty much. And that's how it was during every lap. I would lose them coming out of I-70 and I'd have to claw it back. And so like I was never there to really, really compete for anything. Um, and that was, that was, that was tough, but that's just a byproduct of, um, the weekend and me not staying ahead of the changes and so I'll try to learn from that one going forward and so you can see I mean right here like even that other hairpin that we just went through the, the what we call the scoreboard it was still pretty good but this one with the banking and stuff like it just would not release out of corners with that medium axle so just uh, kind of the way she was in this race and I had mentioned that I wasn't able to play because I was always catching up after lingering in 70. And here's a good example. So they were making moves. They caught, we caught Riley and, uh, I just, I wasn't even there to help try to capitalize on it. And so I, I pushed Josh to the inside there and he wasn't able to make it stick. So now I'm like, Oh, we'll try Riley. Um, but unfortunately, my arch nemesis i70 corner and they just take off again and i have to redo all of it again <laughs> just try to claw back and and get back up to them so they had a heck of a good run out of 70 got both of them got by desi there and i'm now going to catch up to desi and here pushing desi up there uh trying to catch the the two in front of us again and they're kind of battling a little bit and so it's going to allow us to catch up but just not in a position where I can do anything about it. I'm going to try to set it up on the straightaway, but unfortunately, Desi got checked up there, and I hit his bumper, and that killed all my momentum. So so with it, any chance that I had to make a move. Fell back into sixth. This is last lap. I'm still in sixth. I think I have the chance to make a move on Desi, and in hindsight, I think I had a little more gear than him. I probably could have made it stick, but I didn't. And right here through the corner... I uh, just got his bumper a little past mid corner and that washed my front end out and that is pretty much all she wrote. I did not have a chance from that point to catch up and try to try to make up a spot and so that's where I finish is in sixth place. Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. I mean I was not happy with six because I knew that there was more that I had missed just with my tuning decisions and, and not changing the axle. But still like can't be upset about six really so take what i learned try to move on to the next one and improve upon it 
Well, we're already in the car. We packed up in record time. We are on our way from uh, here in Indiana down to Gulf Shores, Alabama for a, a family trip for spring break. So Dad here is going to drive straight through the night. Uh, I'd imagine we'll probably be getting there around 7 or, 7 or 8 a.m. But it was a fun weekend. It, it was a, man, the track changed so much. It was crazy. Um, most of the day, it was an ice skate rink, and then by the time I had my final race, it was pretty much the normal track, lots of grip, and I just didn't do a great job of, of anticipating that. I do have to give Ben credit. That setup change that he recommended, I think was the right, right one, and just little driver little little driver change you know if I could change something it would have been a lot better but it's a good weekend I'll take sixth I need uh, I need solid finishes for the championship and then this guy he's shaking his head his voice is cracked he gets emotional about it still um, he'll, he'll he's got a negative take on it I think he did a great job um, it, it, you turned it on. It was the halfway point through the race. You you hit the you flip the switch like you typically do, and uh, it was it was much better. He threw it off track trying to pass the guy. That's great. Like he was going for it. Things happen. Um, so it will you know we'll, we'll go down here have a little family trip and then we'll be back in action here in just a couple weeks. So thank you guys for watching. It's you.